Hello everyone, and welcome to one of the biggest claims I will ever make in my career. Now to get it right out of the way, this video is strictly opinion based with some fact sprinkle sprinkled in there. If you have a separate opinion, please let me know in the comments below. Toxic comments will be ignored. Also, keep in mind that this comes from someone with a large amount of experience with Call of Duty, Battlefield, and many other shooters. Also coming from somebody who experienced a very abusive microtransaction system with Black Ops 4. It's it's a very sen it's very sensitive to say that, but I will openly admit that it was a very abusive microtransaction system with what they gave us in Black Ops 4. And you guys and if you're if you live under a rock, you should know that. Now, let's get into it. Splatoon 2 is a third-person shooter that was released in July 21st, 2017, created by Nintendo and was exclusively released on the Nintendo Switch. And it is based in a post-apocalyptic world where pretty much sea creatures live in the world and squids can morph into humans. And their terms of fun, they, get, they engage in a sport called Turf War to where you are split into two teams of four players and the team that inks the most ground wins. This also branches off into several different game modes by the names of Tower Control, Clan Blitz, Rainmaker, and Splat Zones, and they're considered competitive modes. Turf War is strictly casual unless there is a Splatfest happening. Now my opinion is that Splatoon 2 is one of the best shooters of, all, of our time. I say our time because it seems that a grind factor of some games goes right out the window. I dive deeper into this reason at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video because it is very important. Anyways, I have seven reasons on why I make make this claim, and we're going to go ahead and dive right into that with reason number seven, and that is gameplay is incredibly simple yet very addictive. The basis of the gameplay is pretty much shoot the ground with ink and try to ink more than the enemy, but how it plays out is the best part. Matches are short, but you are given many ways of thinking at your disposal. While enemy players have the same op objective as you, you need to stop them in their tracks and they're doing the same thing to you. So they don't ink your turf and that turns into an all out chaotic yet strategic battle. You don't have unlimited ink, which leads me into one of the most unique mechanics in any game ever and adds more importance to having as much of your team's ink on the map as possible. You are allowed to swim in your own ink to not only reload or refill, however, however you want to say it, your weapon, but to outmaneuver your opponents, traverse the map, and escape sticky situations. I'm going to make the safe bet and say it is unique, but I really want to say that it is original because I don't think I have ever seen another game use a swimming mechanic like Splatoon does. Speaking of uniqueness, it is not as unique, but you are able to super jump either to teammates or back to your own spawn. While the mechanic is pretty much a suicide button, if you know how to use it and time it right, you can really benefit you and your teammates. Now to the loadout management. There are four slots in your loadout screen. You can't set classes, but you can assign a loadout to an amiibo. If you were wondering, it is not pay to win because you can't swap loadouts mid game. Anyways, the four slots are made up of your weapon of choice and gear of choice, which are very fashionable, I must say. Your weapon is your first slot. Head, clothes, and shoes are your second, third, and fourth slot. Each weapon has a sub-weapon and a special weapon that accompany you in battle, and each weapon caters to specific playstyles. All the weapons that are unique perform differently. Each piece of gear has what I would consider perks. There is one main perk and three other sub-perks that aren't as impactful as the main perk. You can have up to 12 perks in one loadout, and you can stack multiple of the same perk. Once you get a hold of the basics of the game, it can get very addictive. It does it does get very tough to master though, and that is what is the most rewarding part of this game. Noticing that you are starting to improve at the game. Nothing gets more rewarding than that. Reason number six. So much lore and backstory if you care to find it. This game has so much story and ex explanation on why the whole game is the way that it is. There's a lot of depth in this universe. There's a single player campaign that explains to you through character dialogue, in-game notes, and little subtle details in the level design. The Octo expansion even expanded on that lore. It is honestly incredible on how deep the lore goes. Reason number five, all content updates were completely free. As you guys know, this game is no longer supported, and I'm pretty sure it's because they're 
focusing full drive on the next Splatoon installment, and I don't doubt that for any second, but a large majority of this game's big content updates were completely 100% free. No microtransactions, no nothing. I say large majority because they had an exp expansion for this game that was called the Octo Expansion, which added a whole new single player campaign based on the Octoling race. It didn't restrict any multiplayer maps, but it did restrict some clothing selections, but it still wasn't pay to win. Just simply some cosmetic items and a whole new character option called the op op Octoling, my new favorite, honestly. Other than that, all new weapons, maps, gear, etc. were all free. Reason number four, no skill-based matchmaking in casual lobbies. As you know, skill-based matchmaking has been a pretty big issue recently with games like Fortnite, Call of Duty, and a bunch of other PvP games. But in Splatoon 2, there are three separate matchmaking pools. I like and dislike the matchmaking pool. What I like the most about it is that the modes are separated into three categories. Regular, Ranked, and League Battle. Regular Battle is Turf War only, and it is strictly made for casual play only. Ranked in League Battle is Tower Control, Splat Zones, Rainmaker, and Clam Blitz. Turf War is not included, although it would be interesting to see it included. And is incredibly competitive focused and is match made with people of the same rank that you are. Um, I'm not going to go too much in detail with this, but I will link, in descri uh, will link a video in the description below explaining the ranking system in this game. A nice form of skill based matchmaking in my opinion. What I don't like about it is that you can only party up in the league battle and you can only do duo and squads if you're in league battle and you cannot do solo or trio. Reason number three is fresh mode and map rotation. I think this one will be based purely on opinion. I personally really like the rotation system in Splatoon 2. Every two hours, two maps and ranked game modes are rotated out. The map selection can get pretty repetitive, but it is generally a really great way of keeping the game feeling fresh. Reason number two is an absolute metric ton of content. Sure, the game didn't launch with the amount of maps that we see now, but from at the, its current state, there are 23 maps, a wide variety of weapons to choose from with several different combinations of sub and special weapons, and a plethora of gear that you can use to benefit and customize your Inkling or Octoling. There is a pretty big single player mode that is filled with creative obstacles that you can have to overcome to move on in the story. The Octo expansion even added onto that with a $20 paywall. Pretty worth it if you ask me. An all new mode called Salmon Run that wasn't in the first game and it was a wave based survival mode. Unfortunately, it is not accessible all the time, but when it is accessible, there is one out of multiple maps and a specific weapon rotation that you are provided when you play. And to be more in depth, there's about three waves and then you're done with that session. The mode will also reward you with the in-game loot boxes and I will get to that right now actually with reason number one. Loot boxes, in-game rewards, however you want to say it, are rewarded through in-game playtime only. This is very important to me. I don't like knowing that something is restricted only to a paywall, especially if it is a skin, camo, weapon, etc. I was a little upset about the Octo expansion, but I didn't mind it because I was really quick to realize that it was a full-fledged single-player expansion for only $20. Sure, the Octoling was locked behind the paywall, but at least I knew I got so much more than just a new character to play as. Where in Black Ops 4, in order to get a just a simple character skin, you gotta pay $20. Same thing goes with Fortnite. Anyways, this game has absolutely, I put that in all caps in my, in my script there, absolutely no microtransactions. Yes, I know that Nintendo is starting to lean into that a little more now, especially with their mobile games, but this game doesn't even have a single cent of MTX in it. Everything else is all rewarded by in-game play time. A very rare idea nowadays, unfortunately. Not many games are still made like this, and I am glad that Nintendo still knows what a video game is meant for, even with an online shooter that is genuinely fun to play. This is a very grindy game, from ranking up in each ranked mode, to leveling up in general, to earning gold to buy weapons and gear, to salmon run and single player reward grinding. Everything in this game is organically earned, 
and I absolutely love that. So I mentioned loot boxes, and as much as I made it sound like a big deal, it really isn't. That is where Salmon Run plays a humongous role. And, play, and gets players motivated to play it. They call them shifts in this game, and that just means that the game mode is active. You play for a really long time, level up, get paid, pay goes to your meter that gives you the items, go to the window, and boom, you get your rewards. Not only that, but you can grind to get a guaranteed piece of gear that is actually rotated in every new shift. So there is a currency in this game that I never mentioned. It is called Super Sea Snail. It's not microtransactions. You don't get earn it with your real money. And I never really mentioned it because earning it is pretty rare. You used to get a certain amount based on your playtime in the Splatfest that happened, but the Splatfests are no longer a thing in this game. Now the only way to get them is every level after level 30. But these Super Sea Snails allowed you to increase slots or re-roll the slots on your gear. It's pretty much the only role they played, to be honest. Honestly, this is the most consumer-friendly game that you could ask for. I feel like if they didn't make it exclusive Nintendo Switch, a lot more people would be open to trying this. This game is very much worth the $60 price tag, and I will stand by that. I really hope they announce a Splatoon 3 soon. Alright guys, that concludes my reasons on why I think Splatoon 2 is one of the best shooters out there and why I genuinely think you should play it and buy a Nintendo Switch for it. If you found this video helpful on if you should buy Splatoon 2, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new to the channel, and comment if you have ever played Splatoon 2. Also guys, at the very end of this video I'm going to say this. Modern Warfare is coming out. It's very soon. Friday. I don't know about. I don't know what I'm posting. I'm gonna be posting, but I plan to do a 12-hour stream of Modern Warfare. So if you guys want to go see that stream happen, make sure to clink, clink, click the link in the description below. That takes you to my Twitch channel, and make sure to follow me over on Twitch and turn on those post notifications. I'm gonna be grinding the hell out of Modern Warfare as long as I can, as long as I'm physically able to. And yeah, I love you guys. Have a great day.